Hi, welcome to my channel, Cardiology and Beyond. I'm Dr. Sonali, an interventional cardiologist from India. After having understood the mechanisms of the first heart sound in my previous video, in this video, we'll be talking about how the first heart sound behaves in cases of mitral stenosis. So on mind mapping, we're still under the first heart sound and we're going to be dealing with these two main questions regarding mitral stenosis. We're already aware that the first heart sound is loud in mitral stenosis. This statement is usually set in stone during our medical years. The qu question is, why does that occur? Now, a loud first heart sound is heard only when the mitral valve is thickened and pliable or mobile. And usually the most common cause of mitral stenosis is rheumatic mitral stenosis. And in those cases, when it is a mobile mitral valve, that's when it contributes to a loud first heart sound. But the reasons, the hemodynamic reasons are as follows. Generally, when you have mitral stenosis, you have a gradient between the left atrium and the left ventricular pressure tracing in diastole. And because of the obstruction to blood flow from the left atrium to the left ventricle, there is a prolonged diastolic filling time, which means that there's a delayed closure of the mitral valve and the mitral valve remains open till the end of diastole. So if you look at these pressure tracings, the red line denotes the left ventricular pressure tracing and the blue line denotes left atrial pressure tracing. So when you look at the phase of diastole, there is a gradient between the left atrium and the left ventricular pressure tracing throughout diastole. So this continuous gradient means that the mitral valve remains open right till the end of diastole, which means that in the subsequent systole, when the mitral valve closes, it has to travel a longer duration, a longer uh, distance rather, it has to travel a longer distance and it closes with a bang, especially if the morphology of the mitral valve is such that it is thickened and pliable. Now to look at the echocardiographic equivalent of this hemodynamic pressure tracing, let's have a look here. The upper panel represents normal tracing and the lower panel represents what is seen in mitral stenosis. Now we are looking at the flow of blood from LA to left ventricle in diastole and that is denoted by these pressure waveforms by using either a pulse wave or a continuous wave Doppler. So the first waveform is E wave and the second waveform is A wave. Now A, a wave represents the atrial kick which means that this patient has sinus rhythm. Now have a look at the E wave. This E wave is triangular in shape and it comes down pretty rapidly in the middle of diastole. As opposed to this normal phenomenon, if you look at a case of mitral stenosis, here you can see first of all that this is a continuous wave pressure tracing and it is quite dense, which means that there is a significant obstruction. If you look at the maximum and mean pressure gradient, it is 31 by 18 millimeters of mercury which means that the mean pressure gradient is more than 10 millimeters of mercury that denotes severe mitral stenosis. So if you look at the E wave, which is this first wave, it is quite different in morphology to this E wave in normal patients. And this E wave is quite prolonged and it sustains itself right till the end of diastole, after which the A wave is set in. The fact that A wave is present means that this patient still has sinus rhythm. So this is the difference in the E wave, that is the difference in the pressure of tracing denoting the filling of the left ventricle from the left atrium through the mitral valve. The second point is when systole occurs, mitral valve closure occurs at a higher pressure of the left ventricle. And why does the left ventricle have to mount a higher pressure? It is it occurs because it has to overcome the high LA pressure. So when you have such an obstruction of mitral stenosis, the left atrial pressure starts increasing over time. So as we've already seen in the previous video on the mechanisms of the first heart sound, DP by DT is change in pressure upon change in time, 
which is a pressure crossover point which occurs where both the pressures cross over each other. So this pressure crossover point is higher in cases of significant mitral stenosis because the LV has to mount a higher pressure to overcome a high LA pressure. So when you have a high DP by DT, which is here, instead of normally over here, down here, you have a steep slope of this DP by DT and a high DP by DT means that the first heart sound will be loud. Now this is an echocardiographic loop of a case of mitral stenosis. This is the parasternal long axis view in which this is the left atrium, this is the aorta with its aortic valve, this is the mitral valve which is stenosed, it is thickened and this is the left ventricle. So what you can see here is during diastole, this anterior mitral leaflet domes into the left ventricle. And when systole occurs, that is when this LV is contracting, this doming mitral leaflet, that is the anterior mitral leaflet, comes back towards the fixed posterior mitral leaflet. So this is what is seen in cases of mitral stenosis. You have a fixed posterior mitral leaflet and a doming anterior mitral leaflet. And this diastolic doming of this AML or anterior mitral leaflet is known as the hockey stick appearance of the AML. So this is what I want to show you that when you have a pliable or a mobile anterior mitral leaflet, it can contribute to a loud first heart sound. Now suppose this leaflet is no longer pliable, then the loud first heart sound will disappear. Now what happens normally if this was not a diseased valve, in normal people, Towards the middle of the diastole, both the mitral leaflets start floating back towards the annulus and then an atrial kick occurs which again opens both the leaflets and leads to the last part of the diastole. But in mitral stenosis, this floating back of the leaflets towards the closed position doesn't occur. Number one, because the PML is now fixed, so it cannot float any longer. And number two, because of a high pressure gradient across the mitral valve, this AML remains in a doming position in diastole and only comes back during systole. What are the causes of a soft S1 in cases of mitral stenosis? Now, the number one cause why S1 becomes soft is when the anterior mitral leaflet is no longer mobile and in fact it becomes extremely immobile because of heavy calcification. So a heavily calcified mitral valve contributes to a soft S1. In addition, because it is so calcified and so severely stenosed, the left ventricle becomes underfilled. It does not get the adequate amount of preload that it normally should and hence it cannot mount a very high DP by DT. If you have increased volume, then you have increased force of contraction as per Frank Starling's law. But this does not occur when you have a very severely calcific mitral valve. So these are the two main reasons. When you look at the echocardiographic pictures of the mitral valve, uh, this is the parasternal short axis view. This is a case of mitral stenosis which is not calcific. So here you can see the anterior mitral leaflet and the posterior mitral leaflet. This is the left ventricle and this is the right ventricle. Right, so here you can see that it is fused at both its commissures. This is the medial commissure and the lateral commissure. The leaflet, the both the leaflets are fused at both the commissures. However, there is no calcification. On the other hand, when you look at this picture, there is a big calcific nodule here at the medial commissure. And when you have a calcification which affects the leaflets, then it will lead to softening of the first heart sound. Now, another reason for a soft first heart sound could be a severe subvalvular pathology. Now, when we talk about rheumatic mitral stenosis, it doesn't just affect the leaflets. It affects a lot of subvalvular apparatus, which includes the cordy. And in that, there is cordal thickening and fusion. So this is what is seen here. This is a parasternal long axis view of the mitral stenosis in which these 
my, this mitral leaflet is definitely thickened but if you look downwards this is showing thickening of the cordy along with its fusion. Another reason why S1 may be soft on the clinical examination in a case of significant mitral stenosis is when the left ventricular events are masked because of right ventricular events and when you have severe MS it does lead to pulmonary hypertension over time and that can lead to severe right ventricular hypertrophy and then you have a right ventricular apex which hides or masks all the sounds which take place on the left side. Now there could be other reasons also why S1 could be soft in mitral stenosis because of other associated lesions. For example, if there is associated mitral regurgitation, then you will not get the first heart sound which is loud. That is because as we've seen in the first video on the mechanisms of the first heart sound, first heart sound occurs because there is deceleration of the blood column against a closed mitral valve. And because there is no closing of the mitral valve in mitral regurgitation, there is no deceleration of blood column and hence you get a soft first heart sound. Similarly, if you have associated severe aortic regurgitation in a case of mitral stenosis, then aortic regurgitation leads to a lot of blood volume which regurgitates back into the left ventricle during diastole. And as a result, the pressure in the LV overcomes the pressure in the left atrium and it leads to a premature closure of the mitral valve even before systole has occurred. So by the time systole starts occurring, the blood column cannot any longer go towards the mitral valve. In fact, it starts going towards the open aortic valve. Another reason which is rare that can lead to a soft S1 is if there is an aortic ejection click and as we've seen in one of the videos on uh, ejection click, an aortic ejection click can be heard at the apex, but it can also be heard at the base. But the important part is when it is heard at the apex, you may mistakenly think that it is an S1 and you might think that it is soft. Of course, this is a rare cause, so that is not very important. So the question is, does a loud first heart sound denote the severity of mitral stenosis? And the answer is no. Severity of mitral stenosis is denoted mainly by the A2-OS interval, which is the interval between the aortic component of the second heart sound and the opening snap. Shorter the interval or narrower the interval, more severe is the mitral stenosis. So what does this loud S1 denote? It simply denotes that the anterior mitral leaflet is pliable or mobile and that since it is mobile with the absence of calcification, especially in the commissures, this particular patient can undergo a percutaneous therapy called balloon mitral valvotomy to treat the mitral stenosis instead of going for surgery. As always, like, share, subscribe, comment and press the bell icon and I'll see you next time with another video.